This is how I cycled the highest road in the world, from New Delhi to the impressive altitude of 5,800 meters. I'm Francesco and I've cycled about 40,000 kilometers across the globe, through hot deserts, high altitude mountain passes and desolate roads. Now I was ready for my next challenge, climbing the world's highest road, deep in the heart of the Himalayas. This road, full of dangers and hidden beauties, is located in the Hanle Indian Army controlled area, leading to the Chinese border in Demchok. The journey began with a flight to New Delhi, followed by an almost deadly ride to Manali, where at one point I risked being hit by a landslide. But this was just the beginning. From Manali, I took the Manali Le Highway, a route that kills even the most skilled drivers. Here I climbed four passes above 5,000 meters. I usually spend the nights in cheap local tents for just three euros, where I realize the harsh realities of the locals' life. Due to the precarious road conditions, it was common sight of fallen vehicles. In the city of Leh, I got the permit to enter the Hanle military area, but there was a catch. I was allowed only one day in this restricted zone. Two days later, I entered the Hanle district, therefore my 24 hours permit countdown had started. I couldn't lose time. So they let me pass, but they told me that by tomorrow evening I must come back. So I have to be really, really quick. Here I team up with another Indian cyclist. The next morning, locals advised us to take a shortcut through the mountains. Unfortunately, it was a bad idea, since people usually don't know how much harder it is to ride a bicycle compared to a vehicle on such roads. We're having a hard time on these roads because they are quite sandy. The shortcut turned into a 10 hours painful journey, but when we realized it, it was too late for us to turn back. It was getting dark by the time we reached the first mountain pass at 5400 meters and rejoined the pavement. We finally reached the top of the pass. It was cold and rainy the moment we got to a small settlement of tents, just before the climb to Mila. At that point, my permit had expired. I had to make a difficult decision, whether to hitchhike back to Hanle and give up on my dream, or keep going and risk it. I risked it, without knowing what consequences I could face with the military. Early in the morning, we set off for the final climb, joined by an unexpected member. The road to the summit was steep and the oxygen levels got lower and lower, making breathing difficult. We stopped frequently and walked rather than cycled, as the altitude increased. We were almost at the top, but the weather suddenly changed and a storm approached. We got lucky with a mild snow blizzard. After 9 hours, we reached the summit of the world's highest pass at 5800 meters. The feeling of being there was incredible. It felt like a totally different world. It took us almost one hour to go down to the settlement. I've never felt so tired. My body was exhausted from the lack of oxygen that at that altitude it's half of the sea level. That caused me not to be able to eat much food during the day to prevent the stomach from using too much oxygen and avoid muscle cramps. On the third day, we found a ride to Hanle. It was time to face the military with an expired permit. Halfway there, my cycling partner and I split as he took a detour. Alone, I approached the checkpoint. I was anxious. When the officer asked why I overstayed and where I had been sleeping, I decided to be honest. Due to the road conditions, the high altitude and the bad weather, I couldn't make it faster by bicycle. The officer nodded in agreement and smiled. No problem, he said. But then came the unexpected news. Where are you going now? The road to Banali had been destroyed by flooding. Oh, 